I've noticed an interesting phenomena over the years. If you want to hear about a bad doctor, you can't ask another doctor. And if you want to hear about a bad lawyer, you can't ask another lawyer. But if you want to hear about a bad teacher, all you have to do is ask another teacher. And we, educators, did that. Issues regarding teacher retention in the United States is a national crisis, with some parts of the country listing attrition over 25%. Of all the relationships we focus on in education, the one that tends to get the least amount of focus is teacher-to-teacher -teacher relationships. There's a large gap in the opportunity to train colleagues on how to support each other in those roles. A recent study by the Economic Policy Institute lists school climate related to accountability measures as one of the key determinants for teacher attrition, with over 60% of the respondents citing that they never really felt supported as a teacher by other teachers. In most schools, how accountability is defined, those measures of success, are what set the tone for those peer-to-peer -peer relationships. Those measures are student achievement, classroom climate, and sometimes teacher efficacy of how we compare the success of one teacher to another. Schools have often become cultures of documentation when someone isn't being successful. And in fact, there's a lot of pervasive thought about accountability being punitive. But the basic notion of accountability is completely different. Accountability is simply a measure of responsibility. I've been a school leader for 18 years. And the issues that always come back from students, teachers, policymakers, and administrators is all related to accountability. And in 18 years of leadership, I have one startling discovery. Every way that we have measured accountability in schools is all wrong. We can reimagine accountability in school by focusing on the teacher-to-teacher -teacher relationship. Instead of focusing on documentation, when someone isn't being successful, we can instead provide opportunities to build relationships among the adults. School leaders should be creating cultures that empower and embolden trust and transparency. In other words, it's about love. I know, it sounds mushy, right? All you need is love. To love others is challenging, especially because love here is defined as consistently mutually high expectations for the people you're surrounded by, with an accountability, a responsibility to each other. Haven't you ever loved someone? Don't you remember how much you didn't want to let them down? What if, instead of just defining accountability as the typical measures that lead to incremental outcomes, we instead defined it as our mutual responsibility to and love for each other? The hypercritical focus on data has led to a dismal employability forecast for educators. Every industry concerns itself with the talent war. We all want the most talented colleague or employee. You want the most talented designer, creative, engineer, educator. But here's the problem. The talent war is over and talent won. Talent will always decide how and where to be. And as long as the education industry continues to treat its educator talent as less than, we all suffer. We ache and underperform in this absence of love. I know. People see love as intangible. And many people say love is impractical. People often say that leadership takes courage, and it does. But love, let me tell you, love takes courage. And starting today, love should be your immediate filter for everything you're accountable for. We, teachers, students, and especially administrators, we are driving away talented educators we're perpetuating a faulty sense of accountability, and we're abandoning generations of children. We deprive ourselves of authentic connection when we do not talk in terms of loving each other. In 2013, I was presented with a gift that every leader would envy. I was given an empty box, a building, really, to implement my vision for STEM education within my community as a new middle school. In order to accomplish this with the right team, I knew that every vacancy was important. So I created an interview process with a scorable rubric that attempted to measure more about the human than the hubris. And as soon as I selected a colleague, 
I would train them on that process. I wanted them to see how and why they were selected, but to also fill in those gaps of wonder that they couldn't caulk together with their own confidence. I also wanted them to know that if I trusted them enough to hire them, then I trusted them more than enough to pick out our colleagues. In other words, I wanted them to see that I already loved them just for saying yes to being on this team. And I wanted to build their capacity for those teacher-to-teacher -teacher relationships. Creating an environment that cultivates a relationship-based notion of accountability rather than the typical accountability measures takes work. And for me, that work begins with the interview process. By participating in the selection process, my colleagues got to see that they would always be able to be there for each other. There have been over 600 interviews in the last six years for 48 positions, with a retention rate of over 85%. Imagine the stability and camaraderie you could build with a team like that. Here's just one of the questions from our interview that always gets nervous laughter. Tell us about the last time a coworker got mad at you. Simple, right? But that question gets immediately to their ability to love. We have a lot of candidates that tell us, well, no one ever gets mad at me. That's concerning. Either they're obtuse, dispassionate, or lying. We have other candidates that tell us, well, someone got mad at me, but you know, they got over it. Again, not a really great quality to have in a colleague. Listen. If you care at all, if you love what you do, you're gonna make someone mad. Do you see that? Do you know that seeking forgiveness is critically important? Even if the coworker didn't grant forgiveness, do you know that's what real accountability is? I know what a gift it is to start from scratch, to be able to pick everyone. And I'm sure you're sitting there saying, well, I could build the number one STEM middle school in the United States too, if I could pick everyone. And that's the point, you can. Even if you don't start with a blank slate, every vacancy you have, unless it's you, is an opportunity to build that culture and redefine accountability in this framework of love. I implore you, connect and support teachers and show them this real interplay of accountability. Show them how we change our world. Love empowers in cultures of struggle and support. Love empowers in communities where Teachers and students are treated with mutual respect and kindness, and love empowers for holding us to those higher expectations. So where does this love begin? It begins with you. There has to be consensus among the adults in schools that love begins with us. By modeling this framework of accountability and responsibility through love, we can change our world and see that love echoed back to us from our students. We can't wait for love, and neither can they. Thank you.